We're going to get now to some rumors around the Cowboys, but first, we'll take you quickly through the rumor explainer here. You'll see stars. Here's what they mean, just for those of you that haven't watched the show in the past. Zero stars, it's the number of fights Odell Beckham won against the net. It's fake news. Don't buy it. One star, it's a small shred of truth. It could come true, but don't bank on it. It's pretty unlikely. Two stars means the people are talking, and it's firmly in that rumor category. Three stars, it's pretty likely. It's not quite set in stone, but it should go down. And four stars means that Des Bryant caught it because guess what? It was a catch against the Packers, and the NFL has since confirmed that as well. First rumor, could the Patriots OT be coming to the Dallas Cowboys? I'll let you guys in on a little secret here. We went a little bit later than we normally do because we were hoping there would be some type of news around the Patriots offensive office tackles and Cameron Filming and L L Adrian Waddle. However, there is not. So knowing our luck, about two hours after we put this live and post it, he'll, there'll be some kind of development there. But as of right now, two stars on this one. There's a real chance the Cowboys sign either Cameron Fleming or Lee Adrian Waddle. Fleming, I think, could be a starting right tackle or the team swing tackle. I would prefer him to be a swing tackle because I like depth. I don't know if he's a true dynamic right tackle starter or a really good one, but it's a role he can fill. I think Waddle, by the way, is really only a swing tackle. So Fleming is the guy, I think, to monitor the most here. He wants to be a starter after filling a spot start role for the Patriots in recent years. I think he could be the Cowboys' right tackle. I don't know if Dallas is going to pay him that way, but I think if he does sign, we'll know what the Cowboys are expecting from Fleming and from another offensive lineman as well based on how much they pay Fleming. And that brings us to our next rumor as well. With the interest in Fleming and others, could Lael Collins head back to offensive guard for the Cowboys? I'm giving this one three stars. I actually think it's pretty likely. And the Cowboys just love their position flex with guys like Byron Jones and, and Tyrone Crawford and David Irving. The Cowboys are always willing to move players around positions, even if I think it can help be a detriment to their development. So if the, with the Cowboys' interest in Cameron Fleming, if they sign him to a starting caliber deal, I think that is a very clear sign the Cowboys are going to put Lael Collins back at guard. That would eliminate guard as a need for Dallas and which hopefully shore up that offensive line. But I do have some concerns about the, 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 the development of Collins as it comes to constantly bouncing forth from guard to tackle and now back to guard. But I do want to know from you guys, should Dallas move Collins back to guard? Uh, it's a comment we've seen in, in many shows in the past, so I think we're going to see quite a bit of yeses, but keep those votes flowing. I am okay with it. My only caveat is this. If Collins moves back to guard, keep him there. Quit having him change positions every year. That's only going to slow down his progress and his development. We'll get to our third rumor now. Here we'll stick with free agency. Could Dallas try and sign Navarro Bowman? And perhaps more accurately, will they sign Navarro Bowman? Well, two stars on this one. The Cowboys do like Bowman, which we have mentioned on previous shows because, well, they tried to get him last year. They, when he was cut by the Niners, the Cowboys wanted to get him in for a visit and try and sign him. The Raiders got the first crack, and they, well, they never let him leave the facility or the Bay Area. So the Cowboys do have an interest in Bowman. However, He's not the top priority right now for Dallas. They are focused on the offensive line with guys like Fleming. He had a good year for the Raiders. I think he'd be a great number three linebacker. Of course, price tag matters there. So keep an eye on Bowman and Dallas. It could go down, but it's going to take some time here because Dallas does not have Bowman as a top priority right now in the free agent market. Next up, linebacker's a big need. So too is wide receiver. Could the Cowboys add two wide receivers this offseason? There are two names in particular to watch here. Number one, Dontrell Inman last with the Chicago Bears. And then after that, it's Justin Hunter. But I'll say this with the Cowboys. I have a tough time seeing them add two receivers in free agency. And that's what we're discussing here. I'm only giving this one one star. It could happen, but I'd be a little bit surprised if it actually did go down. Here's why. Look at the numbers for these two in their last, in last year combined. Justin Hunter with the Steelers, Inman with the Bears, and the Chargers as well. Those are bad numbers. 27 receptions, 357 yards, and two TDs. Uh, why would you want to sign those guys? Now, Inman, I think, is maybe maybe his comp is a better version of Noah Brown, a better route runner as well, but he's a good blocker on that end. Justin Hunter is a big body deep threat. He would be, in theory, the Bryce Butler replacement. So my question here, and I think this is an important one for you guys, is why would you want to add a veteran wide receiver? Just draft somebody. That's my mindset. I would much rather the Cowboys go out and spend two, even three picks on a wide receiver in the early to mid rounds than sign two veterans who we know haven't done a whole lot in the NFL. It actually doesn't help them in the production area. Of course, 
with the discussions around the needs and whatnot. What is the Cowboys' biggest need? Heart for, for linebacker, like for safety, laughing face for wide receiver, and a wow face for DT. You can throw an offensive line as well, but as we discussed, there's a, very, a decent chance the Cowboys get alignment in the very near future. We'll keep it rolling with the with the rumors here for the Cowboys. Is Tony Romo going to make the cut at his PGA Tour event this weekend? Well, don't get your hopes up on this one. Just the one star here. There are now some odds out there on if Romo will make the cut. They're just 15 to 1. Not exactly high odds for Romo, who will be playing at the Corrales Punta Cana Resort Club and Championship. Don't expect high performance from Romo. The last time out for Tony, at least his last known actual golf event, didn't really go all that well. He played at the Northern Texas Players Tour last month, shot an 81 and then withdrew from the event. So not a promising sign there for Romo. He's a great golfer, but the difference between being a normal scratch golfer and then going to play in a PGA Tour event is pretty sizable. I think Romo's mindset is to not get himself embarrassed there. I think he'll, you know, not be embarrassed, but don't back on him making the cut, let alone competing for a win there either. Let's get to some draft talk here. Players the Cowboys are bringing in for pre-draft visits. First up, Darius Fontaine and Dallas. Now, this is a name that I'm sure many of you won't realize, but there is some interest there. As for drafting him, I'm going to get two stars. Fontaine could be a late-round pick for the Cowboys. He is one of Dallas's pre-draft visits, the official pre-draft visit. The Cowboys get 30 of them. He was at the East-West Shrine game, not at the Combine. If the Cowboys, for example, take maybe Calvin Ridley or DJ Moore in round one, or maybe some of those guys last to round two instead. They could take those guys and then take a guy like Fontaine later on, have him be a developmental type, maybe maybe make the roster or a practice squad option. So those are your, that's your first pre-draft visit here. Next up, and this kind of ties in to the Leo Collins moving to guard discussion. The Cowboys want Colton Miller. Two stars on this one. They're bringing him in for a pre-draft visit. If they sign a lineman like Cameron Fleming or even a Adrian Waddle, I think this ends up dropping down to one. But per Tony Pauline of DraftAnalyst.com, Miller will visit with the Cowboys as a pre-draft visit. The issue for me when it comes to Miller is I think he goes between the Cowboys' first and the second round pick. So if they move down and haven't signed a tackle yet, Maybe that makes sense as an option, but I don't know if he's the most likely early round pick for the Cowboys. They've got other needs I think they could address. Next up, how about Naheem Hines to Dallas? Now, if you recognize that name, it's probably because he ran the fastest 40-yard dash this year at the NFL Combine. Two stars on this one, just like the other pre-draft visits, because, well, it's still very early, and we're discussing whether or not the Cowboys will actually draft Hines or any of these players. An absolute burner. I like him as a day three target for Dallas. If he's on the board, maybe late fourth round or even early fourth round, I think it makes sense. The Cowboys had the picks to play around with. Hines would be a good Lance Dunbar type player, although he does bring more in the actual ground game than Dunbar brings to when he was on the field. It screamed, okay, we're going to throw the ball now for the Cowboys. And finally, number nine here, a player I think more of you guys will recognize at home watching. How about Rashawn Evans, the Alabama linebacker? Could the Cowboys take him in round one? Two stars on this one. The Cowboys are bringing in Evans for a pre-draft visit. I think this is maybe the most likely of the options, if particularly if the Cowboys trade down in round one. Now, we've seen the Cowboys in the past genuinely prefer higher upside athletic freaks at linebacker. That's not necessarily Evans. He's not a bad athlete by any means, but he's not the same athlete of a Tremaine Edmonds or a Leighton Vanderesh of Virginia Tech and Boise, respectively. I think he's an option in round one. If the Cowboys miss out on some of their other top options, someone like Evans, I think, could be a pick. The Cowboys will have several options for a round one linebacker this year. Evans is one of them. One quick note for you guys before we sign off. If you have any questions for me, get them in the comments section. We're going to use some of them for an upcoming mailbag as well, either on Thursday, unless we have some good news for you guys, or on Sunday as well. So get those comments flowing in the comments section. And until then, we'll see you guys next time.